Right. I'm from the Marines, and you want to partner us in. Um, the different franchisement of, of different races can also be seen with a different uh, study, as shown in, uh, by Jerry Shaw, a uh, staff writer in UMAX. Uh, more than 2 million African Americans, or close to 8% of the black adults, are unable to vote because of felony conflict, which is according to the sentencing project. <coughs> These two million, uh, although the percentage seems low, there are two million people is quite a lot. And then uh, we're going next to the next one. The enfranchisement makes reintegration into society uh, unnecessarily difficult. Um, what was stated with, uh, again, Jerry Shaw was the, the process involved to restore voting privileges can be cumulative for some, making it difficult for ex to know if they can vote or to hide, find out how. So basically, the, these processes are confusing these uh, these people so that it makes it harder for them to be able to get their rights if they can within the state. And then uh, an example of, uh, of this would be where I um, was also found in the same article. In Florida, for example, a procedure to automatically restore voting rights for non-violent offenders was later rescinded. This was, they had changed it, but now they went back to the cumbersome uh, process. And going to the different chairs, it leads to criminal conduct. People should not be bored. Our, this one was from uh, Lexis Harris, assistant professor of sociology. People should not be barred from voting simply because they are unable to pay their back their fines, fees, and interest. They would return to these criminal con uh, conducts because they can't get the jobs they need to be able to pay these fines, their fees, and these interests. And then it's still on uh, another Eric H. Holder, the U.S. Attorney General, has stated in many states felony disenfranchisement laws are still on books and the current scope of these policies is not only too significant to ignore, it is also unjust to tolerate. Since this uh, disenfranchisement is still there, they obviously can't get their jobs or any help that would be beneficial for them to stop these criminal conducts. Moving on to the ex-felons, uh, deserve a second chance. Uh, also found by Jerry Shaw, they have paid their debt to society. And once they leave prison, they need to readjust to a new life. They're being thrown out into uh, the world again, so they obviously need a, another chance to be able to go back into society as they can't really do much if they're not allowed to do so. And also found in a uh, by Jerry Shaw was a uh, ex-felons deserve a second chance. Voting rights play a major role in restoring the rights process. Since these guys are being affected by what we decide, they should also have a voice in this. And that's why they need to be able to get a, a second chance. They have already paid their debt to society. Next one is go through rehabilitations and reintegration to become part of a law abiding society. Allowing X. Um, Felons to vote would help them in the reintegration into society as it's more of a figurative uh, saying that we are accepting them again. And then while they're incarcerated, they learn that um, they learn about these about these uh, practices of the law, and they 
they pretty much uh, going through classes to learn this stuff. So they obviously already starting to get into their head. Even prisoners would learn to respect the law, contribute to the common good with voting rights. This would, uh, would show that they, uh, because when they're in prison, they can't really do anything except what work out and learn a few things that they're taught. So they have to learn to respect the law so that they won't go back into this. And then uh, for our Kathleen Chen, uh, staff at Christian Science Monitor, stated, uh, when you can't vote, you don't have a seat at the table. Obviously, they've made mistakes, but these are our family members, our friends, our neighbors. These folks pay taxes. You can't leave about 40,000 people out of a conversation on subjects that directly and indirectly impact them, like criminal justice, reforming, housing, access to fresh foods, employment, and transportation. stated by Kathleen Chen, state disenfranchisement, uh, disenfranchisement laws deny citizen participation in our democracy and patchworks of laws led to an unfair disparity and equal, unequal partici participation in federal elections based solely on where an individual is in addition to the racial disparity inherent in our judicial system. 